All right, guys, so this is my son Caden's quad. This is a 50cc Bombardier. Um, it's a two-stroke. It's been having problems running. I can get it to idle sometimes, but as soon as you give it throttle, it dies right out. So this is a perfect time to teach Caden how to start fixing things. He's six and a half years old, so I'm going to try to guide him through how to do this. And, and I'll do the hard parts only if I need to, like if something needs some muscle or something. So the first thing we're going to do is install this battery. We never had a battery in it. We were always kickstarting it. So hopefully this will make it a little bit better. But we're still probably going to have to take the carb out and clean it out at the very minimum. Key on. Put this. Hold on. There you go. All right. It starts right up. But it just has no power. As soon as you give it throttle, it just dies right out. Alright, try it. He's not wearing a helmet because I know it's not going to go anywhere. That's full throttle right now. over here and take the carb out. Bring it over here. The part. Oh, you got the battery out? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I just screwed in. It doesn't seem like it fits. Is that a fit? Oh, I think it fits. I think this way? Yeah. Whoa. You seem like it's catching it. What you want to do is see all that junk on there. You want to just get that off, spray that all off, just so it's easy to work. This. With. Yep. Now squeeze them together. All right. Now pull it off. Yep. Just a little bit more. Wiggle it. Uh, twist it a little bit like this. There you go. There you go. You're good. You're good. Now just. Now you should be able to just pull that right off. Pull this rubber boot off. No, just with your hands. Yeah, just wiggle it, wiggle it pretty good. Let me see it. Oh, that doesn't want to come off. There you go. Now here, let's make this easier. Here, this is what we're gonna do. Turn this, turn this this way. No. Oh. Get that one off. Get it off? Yep. Like the whole thing? Yeah, just back it off a little bit, just like you can. Now just. Go the other way with it. Other way. There you go. Oh. You're good. What the heck? No, I want to try it. 
Yeah, no, I ain't doing that. What the you gotta twist that bolt off right there. Oh. Other way. This way? Yep. There you go. Oh. Yeah, get square with it. Yep, there you go. Oh, there's a there's a nut on the other side. <clears throat> All right, I'm holding it. You're good. Oh. I'm gonna wash this thing and then I'm gonna wait for it to dry. All right, you're good. Pull it out. Look, you're, you're gonna take this and you're gonna widen these things until it comes off of there. There you go. There you go. What you could do is just slide it one way or the other. Slide it that way and it's fine. You don't even have to take it off. Or that, you could slide it that way, that's fine. Now let's take this off of here. Pull that that way. Okay. It took the rubber it's got some gas in it. All right, so that's where the air comes in on the carburetor. But we're going to take this thing right out so we can see what it looks like. And we're going to clean it out. Yeah. All right, Caden, so on the back of this carburetor, there's a screw that holds on the, the boot, which attaches it to the motor. You're going to have to reach your hand in over here. Let's, oh, let's try it. Gonna... Yeah, let's try this, the small end, this one. This? Yep, that probably worked. It's right there. There. I can't. I can't really do it. There you go. Can't isn't a word. How are we gonna fix this thing? All right. Well, I got that for you, Caden. So now, why don't you take this and give it a little yank out of there? Uh, right here. Yeah. Just take the whole carburetor and just give it a little yank. Twist it while you're doing it. There. Let's go like this. There you go. Uh, right, now we got the carb out. Carburetor But out. we still got to disattach some things on it. I think this is the auto choke and I'm not really sure how that works. I have the manual to this so we're going to figure that out. Because that could also be a problem too. So before we do anything, let's shut off this fuel. Come over here. That's your fuel shut off. Turn that to the side. What, this? Yeah. This way? Yeah, reach from underneath them. Turn it right to the side. <clears throat> right there. All right. Now, why don't you take the needle nose pliers? Mm. That. You know what, this will be a video that nobody can say can. Yeah. There you go. Yep, bring it right off of there. Just gotta get it past the little barb on there. That's it. Alright, here, I'm gonna do this for you. I'm gonna pull this out. It's gonna be a little gas that comes out. But that's okay. Well, I shut it off. Yeah, but there's still some in the lines. All right, so we're gonna take them two screws out of the top right there. You see them right there? Oh yeah. Pull it out with your finger now. Oops, sorry. All right, let's put those right here. Uh, is it the same way? Yep. Maybe we can clean the screws off and bolts. Yeah, we can soak them in the, the greaser. Yeah. Uh, that over there. All right, now uh, hopefully this will just, just try to pop that right off there. I'm not sure if, I haven't had that off, so I don't really know, but there you go. That's good. This clip is probably going to be pretty hard, so I'm going to get that out. There we go. Alright, got the carb free. So rather than work inside with all the fumes, we're just going to do this right on the ground here. A piece of plywood. Let's get yeah. all the gas out of here. Yeah, I started a little... 
All right, Kaden. So this is how this works. So inside of a motor, there's a fire burning. So with a fire, you need air and you need fuel, okay. and you need spark too. But for this right here, you don't need any spark. So, so this is how it works. The air comes in right here. It mixes with the fuel right here, and then it goes through and into the motor from here. Ah. So if something's blocked up then you get too much air and not enough fuel or too much fuel and not enough air. So let's get this apart. We're gonna take the bowl off first. I'm gonna hold it. You gotta press real hard. There you go. Bugs don't annoy me for some reason. Why? I don't know. Is you gotta turn faster than that, boy. Come on, turn that thing. Like that? Yep. Alright, one left. Press hard. There you go. Those came out pretty easy for you. Yeah. Oh, that just went. All right, pull that bowl right off the bottom. There you go. Gas just got on me. Yeah, that's okay. Let's see. I'm wiping it on the bottom. Got a little bit of rust in the bottom, but I think we're that fine. That guy has kind of cleaned me, actually. It's going to be for your full throttle, and this one's going to be for your idle. So I can look through the full throttle one and I can see that that one is opened right up. You can see light through it. No problems there. And the idle one is fine because I know this thing idles pretty good. So the jets are not going to be clogged. That's usually the first thing that you would check. I was just doing some research on this quad and a lot of people are saying the spark arrestor could be clogged up. I don't really know a lot about these two-stroke motors, but they're saying it's somewhere back here, so I guess we'll start by taking this off. Alright, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna start this one too. So when I come to this one, all I have to do is untighten it. Is it in here? Yeah. I think so. You're good. It's out. <gasps> Wait, no, I think I might. There you go. Eww. Yep, that's pretty plugged. All right guys, I think I might have found a problem. This is the spark arrestor, and there is barely any holes in that at all left. So for right now, I'm gonna do some more research on it, but for right now I'm gonna clean this and put it back in. I kinda wanna just take it off. I don't really see too much use for it, but. So that's what it looks like after cleaning it. You can see there's a lot of difference there. We went from 5% flow to 95% flow. Careful, that's, you gotta be gentle. That's pretty fragile. There you go. After this one, we might be able to just Put the others in. Here. 
No, I don't know, really tight. No, 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 you don't want to do that. You don't want to tighten it up. You want to put them all in first. Why? Because you always want to put them all in before you tighten them up. Just get them snug. What does that mean? That just that means just you just start. tighten them up enough until it starts to until you start to feel it getting harder to turn. this you see how my hand is I'm gripping the whole thing with my fist and then you turn it turn it with both hands both hands keep so turn it until it's really tight there you go maybe a little bit more if you can get it push hard too there you go good job okay that one's like Glue. Yeah, it's almost there though. Alright. Don't like all my muscle. Ooh. Okay. You just don't want to tighten up one side until you got all the bolts in. The screws for it right oh, here. I think it goes right here, like this. Where's the screw? Is that the right way? Yeah. That doesn't seem like it. That slides in, right? No, oh, only the bottom thing. Should be ready to roll. Whoa, this has got a lot of power now. <laughs> I'm feeling out. So we definitely fixed the problem, but we have another problem. Right now I have something in the front here that was smoking. It smelled like plastic was burning. And I checked and there was a fuse back here and I had actually bypassed the fuse and wrapped aluminum foil around it. And it was like melting the housing. So I'm not sure what that is, but I just took the fuse out. So we're just gonna kickstart it for now until I can figure out what that is. All right, try it now. Something was drawing power. Give it a little throttle. There you go. There you go.
Working pretty good. It's amazing how the stupidest, simplest little things will hold you up. We haven't ridden this in like six months because it wasn't working right. I don't know a lot about two-stroke motors, but if I did, I probably would have investigated that sooner. It's a five-minute fix. That carburetor definitely was not the problem. All right, guys. Well, this quad works really well now. It's working better now than it ever was the whole time we had it. So sometimes when I'm doing a project like this, I'll video it and then I may or may not put it out. I may or may not edit it, but this one was worth it. I think because some people should know about this because I didn't really know anything about it. You know, that um, flame arrestor there was the problem. I took the carb out and that really didn't do anything. I didn't find anything wrong in there. Everything was working good. And it does make sense that it was doing that because it just felt like something was plugged up. I thought it was further down the line, like somewhere's right here that it was plugged up, but it wasn't. It was just that that flame arrestor back here. Wow, that's not even it's not even really hot. We've been riding this non-stop for like an hour now and it's not even hot. I tried putting sea foam through it. I also made sure I got all the water out of the carb. I made sure there was flow coming from the gas, from the petcock there. I think there's also a little water separator in the petcock there too. And I drained that out, but I tried all that stuff before too, and none of it worked. So I thought it was something with the carbs, maybe an adjustment or something, but it was just definitely that flame arrester in the back. I always thought the flame arrester was actually up front in the intake, like it is on a jet ski. So that's really the only two-stroke knowledge that I have is from jet skis. I've never really had snowmobiles or any other kind of two-stroke other than like weed whackers but and chainsaws I guess too but I really don't work on them that much. You guys know me I don't really care for gas motors but obviously a quad's not going to have a diesel motor on it so sometimes I have to work on them. But anyways this is a good experience for Caden because he got to learn how to fix things. I think he has a better understanding of how the carburetor works and a few other parts on it. So that's what you need for kids nowadays because otherwise they sit in the, on the computer or on the video games all day and they never learn anything and then they grow up and be useless. So Caden uh, has a, a good shot at life when he, when he has a head start. You know, and I didn't want to just fix it for him. I wanted him to fix it himself so he could learn. Otherwise he just sits there and just really doesn't soak in the information, you know. All right, Caden, so what'd you think of working on this quad with me? It was actually really fun. Yeah? I liked it. Yeah? You wanna go work on something else now? Yeah. You wanna go work on something bigger, a diesel? I'll work on your quad. Eh, let's work on something big. Let's go get that track loader working. There you go, works good.